Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. Well, in today's video, we have a major, major update with Barack Obama. And actually, I'm going to be exposing the truth around Barack, about Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and basically their whole family. So we have a lot to cover. And quite frankly, I, you know, I think the mainstream media doesn't really talk about this stuff and people are talking about Michelle Obama potentially running for president in 2024. So I think the public deserves to know a lot of this stuff because, you know, the mainstream, I don't see the mainstream media covering it and I think it's quite alarming. We also have some updates with the war going on in Israel. Um, so I do want to talk about that. And of course, say our prayers for all of those involved who have died. And of course, the young children who have been taken hostage by Hamas, who are still in hostage. Uh, and we also have some updates with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's potential impeachment. And with Donald J. Trump, because I'm a big fan of Trump. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it. But before we do, we're going to... Pray and read the Bible because God comes first. Amen. Comment amen if you believe that God comes first. And give a like. Let's try to spread this video to more people. I just got my coffee mug. It says Meowie Christmas. I don't even have a cat, but I had to get this mug. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So this Bible verse comes from the book of Galatians. So if you'd like, you can close your eyes and listen, and then we'll get started with the news. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That's Galatians 6, 9. And in this Bible verse, I think God is telling us that we need to keep faith and have patience. For in due season, it says, in God's timing, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So do not lose faith and we can, you know, actually reap the benefits of having that faith. Okay, so we're going to dive straight into the Obama, uh, Barack Obama video today. It's kind of like a five part video, but I'm going to put it all together in one video so you don't need to watch any other ones. Um, so Elizabeth Warren, who's a, a very liberal, progressive um, senator. I, th I think she's a senator, right? Um, yeah, she's a senator. She just came out and finally, not came out that way, but, <laughs> well, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, anyways, she came out and talked about Obamacare. And she said that Obamacare's unintended consequences is overdue. So she finally came out and said that Obamacare is bad. Um, she has in the past oppo opposed Obamacare repeal efforts and advocated for Medicare for all. Um, but she's, is, she is at long lasting that Obamacare has increased healthcare prices and created other unintentional consequences. This is the Affordable Care Act, the official name for Obamacare. She's recently had an epiphany about industry consolidation and price increases caused by the healthcare law. I mean, you're, this is also a healthcare system who we have this woman or man, whatever you want to call them, Dr. Rachel Levine. This is the person who's in charge of our government's health. I mean, if that doesn't tell you how confused our government is, I don't know what is. Now, I wanted to also talk about, so Michelle Obama, this is why I kind of, this sparked a a conversation in my head about this is that Michelle Obama met up with the Clintons to fly to Rosalind Carter's funeral. I don't know if you know this, but Rosalind Carter died. Um, she's the former, one of the former first ladies, uh, Rosalind Carter. They all went to Atlanta. Michelle Obama went with Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and president Biden on air force one. Uh, yesterday to travel to the funeral. However, who was notably absent? Barack Obama. Michelle Obama, 
59, traveled without her husband and Biden's ex-boss, former President Barack Obama, amid renewed speculation that she could follow in Hillary Clinton's footsteps and seek the nation's top job for herself. So, why is this interesting? Um, a Democratic source told Radar Online that if Michelle Obama announced that she was running for president, the election would go immediately from a hotly contested foot race to a landslide, they're saying, because Donald Trump is beating or is leading Joe Biden in all of these polls that are coming out. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them, and especially in swing states. Now, this wasn't, I, this start, I started doing some digging. Barack Obama, they reached out to one of his representatives about where he was and they declined to comment. Former First Ladies Laura Bush and Melania Trump also attended the funeral without their husbands. Now, I wanted to talk about why Barack Obama was missing from this. This is not the only time that Michelle Obama has traveled without her husband. We have a, a um, another video or another story that I found where Michelle Obama is hanging out with Tom Hanks. I mean, it looks like she's basically in her underwear. And, well, it's her bathing suit, but it's not a very flattering one. I don't want to show it because, you know, I know some of you guys have to eat food today and I don't want to spoil your appetite. But Michelle Obama went on a snorkeling session with shirtless Tom Hanks, his wife Rita Wilson in Italy, before climbing aboard Steven Spielberg's $250 million super yacht. Michelle Obama looks somber outing during outing in Madrid. So, this is Tom Hanks, and he's shirtless, and Michelle Obama, she has her bathing suit on, her one piece, and it's like, well, where's Barack Obama? Right? Where's Barack in this whole thing? Don't you think that Barack Obama would wanna join them? on this. So I dug up a couple short videos. It doesn't seem like Barack Obama and Michelle Obama have a very strong relationship. Let's watch this. We had your wife Michelle on the show and she had mentioned that for about 10 years of the marriage, she really didn't like you. Oh man. Um, so asking for a friend, um, how do you get back in good graces? <laughs> So, <laughs> it's not like they're 80 years old. I mean, they're, they're in their 50s, right? Barack Obama, age, he's 62. I mean, the video was taken probably when he was in his 50s. I mean, maybe it was this past year. But for 10 years of your marriage, you were unhappy? I mean, how long have you guys even been married? When did Michelle Obama and Barack Obama get married? In 1992. So that was... 20 years ago, right? No, 30 years ago? 30 years ago. Is my math off? 2022. Yeah, 30 years ago. So for a third of the marriage, they were unhappy? Really? And y'all were in the White House for eight years. Was it during that time that you were unhappy? Or now when your wife is going on vacation, super yacht vaca trips without you? We had... Your wife Michelle on the show, and she had mentioned that for about 10 years of the marriage, she really didn't like you. Oh, man. Um, so, asking for a friend, um, how do you get back in good graces? <laughs> Again, for a friend. You got to finish up taking notes. Let me, let me just say this. Uh, it sure helps to be out of the White House. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, to, to have a little more time with her. Right. You know, what also helps, though, about children. And yeah. I don't know about your spouse. Michelle. Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. What helps is your children, which by the way, it doesn't seem like their children are doing too well. Sasha Obama is seen walking around Hollywood or LA or wherever she is, smoking a cigarette while leaving a Labor Day party in Los Angeles. So she's, they're partying, smoking cigarettes. I mean, this is not a good look for the daughters of, you know, one of the, the most elite families in this, in, this, in this country, which by the way, Barack Obama said, well, these are, this is the reason why 
Michelle and Obama and I are being held together. Um, you know, smoking is not illegal by any means, but it, it's not a great look. I don't know what the daughter's doing here, but it's like, you know, it's just not, it's not a great look. Um, and then not only her, but the other daughter too, Malia. And again, I kind of feel more so bad for the for the daughters because they seem like nice daughters. I just think, you know, why do why do people smoke? Usually because they're stressed and because they're they're uh they got a lot going on, right? They got a lot of stress going on and a lot of anxiety. I think that's why a lot of people smoke, right? It it uh relaxes them. It, you get the, a super big nicotine hit. Um so I didn't want to like make this whole video just, you know, kind of bashing Barack Obama and their family because, you know, their their daughters, you know, they didn't want to, I'm sure they didn't want to get born into this, you know, lifestyle. But here's a interview with Barack Obama talking about Trump. Like, I think that's what young people want. Um, but, it, you know, our existing democratic institutions are creaky. And we, we're going to have to reform them. So let's ask about the the creaky or not institutions in the United States. Yeah. The spectacle of a former president. Be Which, by the way, that haircut, her hairdresser needs to get fired immediately. I'm so sorry, but what the heck is going on with that hair? <laughs> if that's a wig, I do apologize, but you need to get a better wig. Being uh, federally indicted. How is the rest of the world, the democratic world, maybe even the non-democratic world, meant to interpret that indictment? Who talks like that? The democratic world, maybe even the non-democratic world. How does that even make sense? The democratic world or the non-democratic world? So basically any human. <laughs> and indeed the fact that a federal indictee is running, is able to run for the highest office in the land, maybe even the world. Uh, it's less than ideal. <laughs> it's less than ideal. <laughs> Shut up. But uh, the fact that uh, we have a former president who uh, is having to answer uh, uh, to charges brought by prosecutors does uphold the basic notion that nobody's above the law. Uh, and the allegations will now be sorted out uh, through a, a, a court process. I think I'm more concerned when it comes to the United States with the fact. You know what is crazy though is that after all these allegations and all of these charges being brought forth, I don't see Trump behind bars. I don't see Trump in jail. I don't see, you know, Trump still traveling around doing his thing. So for Obama to say that, oh, nobody's above the law, me just as a spectator playing devil's advocate, it almost seems like they're going after him specifically because he was present and because he was hated and because he is hated um, and because he is Donald Trump, not because, you know, is if somebody else did this, would they get that treatment too? Maybe, I mean, maybe with the whole, um, you know, his business, the Trump organization, but, you know, we'll see there. Donald Trump, he has been mixing up Obama and Biden during his speeches, but it's not, it has been on purpose, Trump. Trump came out and said, a lot of people are saying, Trump, why are you mixing up Obama and Biden in your speeches? Well, Donald Trump is basically arguing that Obama is still, ha he still has influence in our country. And I have to say, you know, with basic pattern recognition, um, uh, uh, Joe Biden was Barack Obama's vice president for eight years, right? So Obama was basically Biden's mentor in a sense, right? Obama was president while Joe Biden was vice president. You know, they're together all the time. And now that Joe Biden is president, well, it's like he still had, he still would, he's still like for the role of president, who's the person that he is getting inspiration from to, to lead the country, Obama, right? 
who's the person that Joe Biden's thinking, oh, what would, what would Obama do during this situation? Because that's what Joe Biden knows. And Joe Biden spent time in the White House while Obama was president looking up to, you know, and take in answering and kind of following in, in Biden's footsteps. So uh, Donald Trump has been very, very vocal about saying that, look, Obama, he is still having effects on this nation even today. Ted Cruz claims that Democrats could parachute Michelle Obama in as a presidential nominee. I actually think that Michelle Obama does make sense for Democrats to run for president. She's repeatedly denied saying that I want to be president. She, or yeah, she, she keeps saying, oh, I don't want to run for president. I don't want to run for president. But a lot of times people use that as a strategy to um to say well i don't want to be president but i guess i'll do the job because you know we need we need somebody to step up and then at the last second you know they do step in it's a big strategy is somebody because it you're playing the humility card the humble card humbleness card oh i don't want to be president i don't want to be president but then everybody's like well i guess i'll be because nobody else is and joe biden i mean he's getting old I wouldn't be surprised in six months he goes, ah, I'm just going to retire and eat ice cream. Or, you know, maybe something will happen to him. Who knows? But what I do know is that there already are a lot of talks about Kamala Harris potentially stepping in as president if in the event they do win and something happens to Joe Biden where he's mentally or physically unfit to, you know, do the role. A lot of people are actually already talking about that. Democrats as well. Um... So, uh, Ted Cruz says, here's a scenario I think is perhaps the most likely and most dangerous. In August of 2024, the Democrat kingmakers jettison Joe Biden and parachute in Michelle Obama. In August, in August. So that's next summer. So that's in around, um, what, nine months? Because we just finished summer, right? Yeah, it's fall right now. Yeah, that would be in about nine months. So that would be basically right before, because then August, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Sorry, I still need to count my months sometimes. So that would be around three months before the election. Then all of a sudden, um, you know, she comes in really quickly and then boom, the vote happens. So it's like, we don't really know. Ted Cruz said choosing the former first lady as the Democratic nominee would be a decision the party could rally behind. Choosing a black woman is a choice that would not disrupt the party or infuriate African-American women, which is a critical part of, of the constituency. Yeah, exactly. A lot of, you know, Democrats, they do like to support a person of color or a minority because they think that it's, you know, it's in the name of diversity and it's in the name of, you know, inclusion when in reality, we should not be voting for somebody based on the color of their skin. We should be voting for somebody based on how good they are as a person. And that's, in my opinion, what it means to, to not be racist, is not saying, oh, you know, like Governor Gavin Newsom, he, he uh, appointed some, some woman and literally in his announcement tweet, he says, oh, we are celebrating that we finally appointed a black lesbian woman. And it's like, why are we celebrating that? It's like, good for her that she's lesbian and that she's black, but it's like, shouldn't we be celebrating that that's the best person for the job, not based on somebody because of the color of their skin and their sexual de you know, desires? Okay, she doesn't like men, who cares? She likes women, okay, cool. Do your thing, sister. Go have fun, <laughs> do whatever you wanna do. Have your you know, sexual fun and go display it to the whole world, but it doesn't, why does, why does it matter, you know, that this woman has fun with women instead of men? Why does sexual fun with men, and, with women instead of men, why does that have anything to do with leading, you know, or ha holding a government position a at all? So anyways, um, Kevin McCarthy says that Trump should pick Nikki Haley as vice president. What do you think about that? Kevin McCarthy, I mean, I don't know. He's kind of lost my kind of, uh, not respect, because I, well, 
I never necessarily did like really respect Kevin McCarthy, but um, huh. now that he got ousted out as Speaker of the House, it's like, who really is listening to Kevin McCarthy? Is, isn't he also under investigation? Trump should pick Nikki Haley as Vice President, McCarthy says. He had an interview that he that he said he would advise President Trump to pick Nikki Haley as his running mate. If I was a political person and I was going to advise somebody, you're going to pick the vice president that's about addition, not subtraction. So you're not going to pick somebody that already equates to you, McCarthy responded. Now, if I was looking for purely political reasons, what it looks like today is the anti-Trump vote is going to Nikki Haley. Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe. But I don't think that that's why you should pick somebody is because they're voting for her because they don't like Trump. You Shouldn't you also pick a VP based on somebody who's going to do the best job? I hate this political nonsense. That's the whole reason why Trump ran in the first place, bro. It's not... He's not trying to follow in your first footsteps, Kevin. I'm sorry, but he's just simply not. Now, update with the Israel-Hamas war. Is Israel is assessing Hamas claim that 10-month-old hostage was killed in Gaza. Oh no, was the 10-month-old potentially killed? Um, here's what we know. The truce between Israel and Hamas is due to end today. So the truce is planning to end today, but... Talks are going, are ongoing to extend the pause in fighting to allow for the release of more Israeli hostages and Palestinian prisoners. The expectation is for an extension of at least two additional days. Israel's, Israel's military said today it is looking into Hamas's claim that the youngest hostage held in Gaza, 10-month-old Kafir Babis, has been killed. Along with his four-year-old brother, Ariel Bibas, and their mother Shiri, Hamas said, the three hostages, some of the most prominent faces of the crisis, had been killed in Israel bombardment. Oh, so sad. It's so sad to think about these young children um, who are being held hostage and their parent. I mean, that three-year-old or the four-year-old girl, her both of her parents were killed in front of her. And, you know, can you really understand that when you're that young? I, I honestly beg to say that yes. They will remember that. I mean, I have very, I actually have like some memories from when I was like four years old. I remember, you know, kids remember everything. And especially with something that traumatic, that doesn't leave your memory if you see that. You know, then you have to go, where's my mom? Where's my dad? I mean, four-year-olds are smart. Like five-year-olds, you, kids, kids, kids are, I like to say, or I like to think that kids are fundamentally intelligent uh, when they're young, and then they basically, you know, depending on how smart their parents are, then they start to lose their intelligence or, you know, that's why it's really important. And actually education, the highest or the most important place of education is the domestic, you know, in the house. It's not in school. Kids learn the most at home, not in school. Kids go to school to learn and then they come back home, right? And they're at home seven days a week on the weekends. All day, all night, well not all day because they're at school during the during the day, but you know, they learn the most at home. And then they go to school and then they come back and take what they learn at school and you know go and then the all summer vacation too. So it's like at home kids learn the most. Anyways. Um we already talked about that. We already talked about Obama. Biden is doing really poorly in a lot of swing states, five out of six swing states, which again is, you know, maybe a reason why Democrats are like, all right, well, we need to find somebody else. Arizona, he's doing badly. Nevada. Uh, Georgia is the only, I oh know, what was, oh no, Georgia. Biden's doing bad in Georgia. Pennsylvania. And by bad, I mean, like, Trump is doing better than him. Um, I believe Michigan is the only one that Biden is leading Trump in. Wisconsin. Oh, no. I think, I don't know. But five, I, I forget which ones they are, but five out of six swing states, Biden is, is uh, trailing uh, Donald Trump. Um, Lauren Boebert and Joe Biden exchange blows in Colorado. 
These headlines are crazy. It sounds like they literally got into like a boxing match. Exchange blows. What did they even say? Boebert, along with other Republican representatives, voted against it, and she has called it a complete scam. They're talking about the $200 million expansion in Pueblo. Um, this wind factory, did you guys know about this? The wind turbine tower manufacturing plant based in Pueblo. The company said Biden's act made its $200 million expansion possible. Jesus, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to say the Lord's name in vain. Sometimes I can't help myself. Hunter Biden has agreed to testify publicly, publicly before the House Oversight Committee. So that will, uh, Hunter Biden is open to testifying publicly before the Republican-led House Oversight Committee on December 13th. I believe that will be in front of Jim Jordan, so that will be very entertaining to say the least. House Speaker Mike Johnson is confident that aid for Ukraine and Israel will pass in the House, as well as funding for border security. Um, so those are the major updates. In my opinion, I think it's actually good that Republicans are stepping up and kind of playing the same game that Democrats have been playing as far as, you know, move, trying to you know, move forward with an impeachment against Donald Trump. They're trying to do the same thing with Joe Biden right now. So big kudos to Jim Jordan. Massive updates with Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. I don't know. I just, it, it honestly just scares me um, that they're, you know, really considering somebody like Michelle Obama to step in as the Democratic nominee. So hopefully that doesn't happen. You know, I don't really like I just, I, I would think we would move into to a very weird place in our world if that did happen. But I mean, yeah, I can't control anything. So <laughs> just leaving it up to God at this point. So let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Take care. God bless. And we'll talk soon.